Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It is me, Duke CT, back once again with a AEW Blood and Guts review. And a yeah, what a show, what a show, what a show. Now, there's been, uh, you know, there's some good stuff here, some bad stuff, and some interesting stuff. And honestly, the great stuff is Blood and Guts. But first, let's get into the first match. The FTW Championship as Hollywood, Hollywood, Jack Perry, a.k.a. the Irish version of Hangman Adam Page taking on Hook. And this was actually a good match. Really good. It showcased how uh, Jack Perry really knows how to play both type of like he can be the babyface. But also I think this calling of him being this uh, natural villain is really uh, good as, uh, you know, both Hook and, uh, you know, Jack Perry had good chemistry, especially I just love the fact that, they, oh, man, that uh, uh, that huge, like, uh, T-Bone suplex, uh, the, like, almost, uh, Jack Perry almost clipped the uh, cameraman. I'm like, holy crap. It was that type of stuff. It was a really, um, you know, good stuff here. Both guys did well. And I like the fact that cheating of uh, Jack Perry, he just you know, you know, knocked down the referee, and then you know, got uh, taken down by Hook, and it was one, two, three, the match went over. But then he took the FTW title, hits it, hides it, and while he covers him, smiles, and then wins the FTW title. Great stuff here. Uh, that was a really fun uh, match. I really did enjoy. Um, the, the match, Jack Perry um, really did a great job here. Just, just really is. I mean, this is, this is why I'm like, you know, this, like, you know, it's a sink or swim. And, uh, and I would tell you, they, um, they swam here. And I think Jack Perry swam in, uh, right here. So, Honestly, this was, um, this is, again, a really good uh, match. So, I really did like it. So, he has all that stuff there. So, next up we have, yeah, Dr. Big Baker DMD versus the Spice Ranger Kelly Sparks, which, eh, was fine. I didn't care for it. And it sucks because I really think there should be more... Personally, it's not a problem not just AEW, but also WWE. Uh, the, the lack of women in wrestling is like, you know, only one match a card or zero matches. It's just, you know, pathetic. Um, and I know you want to have most time for blood and guts, and you can't have all matches be like 10, 10, 10, all that type of stuff. I get it. But I look at, you know, Impact Wrestling when they actually feel like they care about their women's tag division and uh, their women's division as well. I'm just, it just feels like um, more often than not, the women's wrestling in AEW most nights are just afterthoughts. And it's been a problem since, you know, honestly, going back from, um, you know, the first couple of years and such, I hope that it changes because it just seems like one of the main issues of AEW. Yeah, but that's just my little rant there. Um, yeah. Then we get to the blind eliminator tag team final. A, uh, the AWO champion MGF and Adam Cole with a new mixed team. Taking on Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia. Honestly, first off, you have to say, before the match, you had um, Cole and MGF have uh, matching tights and jackets. And then they had the, the dance off. Just really good. Everything else. Just, by the way, all that good stuff here. And just really... Um, <laughs> you know, just good stuff. And the hot tag to MJF really is. They build it up the double clothesline. They never did it. It just really is the MJF and um Adam Cole tag team. The better than you, baby, is really been good so far. Did a nice <laughs> everything. They really do want to love this. They want to love MJF so much. Um. It's amazing they do. And then somehow, some way, 
They won the match via a double clothesline. Um, <laughs> also, you know, shout out to MGF doing a um, tope and then landing on the feet, and they just did the uh, uh, the SpongeBob walk like a Cody and such. So, seriously, it was a, a fun time. And also, after the match, <gasps> there's a bit of tension. I'm not just Cole and Adam, uh, you know, Cole, Adam Cole and MJF with him looking at the world title. They arguing, but also both Daniel Garcia and uh, Sammy Guevara. Looking at Chris Jericho, who was there at the match, and they both walked. He's like, "Hey, man, you know, do what?" And they looked at each other, and they both walked off. So it looks like the Jericho Appreciation Society might just be gone, and they might be going their separate ways. So that's gonna be very interesting. And then you have FTR showing up, and basically um, the match is gonna be at July 29th at Collision. So that's gonna be a fun match. And then we get to. Well, it's time for enough talk. It's time for the main event. And oh boy, let's see. The Golden Elite of Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, the Young Bucks, and Kota Ibushi taking on the Blackpool Combat Club's John Moxley, Ring of Honor World Champion Ka- Claudio Cascaloli, Wheeler Will- Utah, Konosuke Takesta, and the Bastard. Pac in Blood and Guts. And I like the fact that both Blackpool Cut had two separate entrances. One on stage and one one from the crowd. Uh, by the way, props to Yuta, who was injured during that. Um, uh, he was injured um, before the match. Place, uh, we needed him and uh, um, I think Kenny Omega. He tweaked his knee, I believe. But it looked like he was ready to go during this match. He did a really good job. Both teams did a great job here. Um, just so much violence. The bed of nails. I don't know where they get these. We- like, where did when does John Moxley find these wonderful toys? How does he get those wonderful toys? And by wonderful, I mean completely insane and you know completely bloody and all that good stuff. But yeah, and um, t- you know, I just like the fact to cast this theme. He just uh, th- th- just a that stuff, and he just. Threw the chair down when he was rushing, and it's uh, good stuff here. Uh, but it was uh, Cody Bushi his debut, and him just walking slowly, taking out every member of the uh, Blackpool Combat Club, and he looked a little offish. But I believe he's just been a little rusty for a while. But now I think too, if he's gonna be in there for a while, I think he'll get back to feet. Hey, eventually you're gonna get back to it. But overall, this was a great match. Back and forth, bloody, insane Pac with that just diving, um, you know, diving feet through the table and the crowd chanting, we want fire. <laughs> just no. Tony, Tony Khan just had new rules set up. You can't have no fire in this thing, man. Jeez, man. I know Moxie would be fine with it. Wouldn't be the first time, you know, Cody Bobos killed himself getting that stuff. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. They couldn't. I don't think they could have fit, fit it in. But yeah, you had the, the uh, you know, the, you know, broken glass you know, everywhere, you know, broken glass everywhere. Spot everyone just it's just violent, all violence, everything, everyone, just all the time. And I, you know, just the thumbtacks raining from the heavens, oh, just everything. I, I really liked that. And then. Well, things started to fall apart for the back, uh, Blackpool Combat Club after just one errand hit. And, um, you know, after there was some miscommunication throughout the match, but then the bastard Pac just said, screw this, took some pliers, cut open it, and just walked off. Deuces to uh, Gladio and everything else. And then after that, the Kesta and uh, Don Callis left. <laughs> so it was down to three, and it was just everyone just beating the hell out of Yuta. It's, hey guys, we're going to take this young guy and make him suffer like anything else. Just make him bleed, beaten down, bloody, and just all the other stuff there. But after he was getting choked out with the chain, it took, you know, John Moxley tapping out, saving Yuta. He saved him because Yuta wasn't going to tap. Claudio was knocked out. 
and and John Moxley, the old violent blood dad, <laughs> saved his uh young uh his young uh pupil, and at the end of the day, it was one of the most um yeah it was bloody it was violent and at the end of the day it was just a you know so it looks like it's over and i think um honestly i'm not really surprised i mean when you have mercenaries on your team expect this to happen so i wouldn't be surprised that maybe an all out or all in the blackpool combat club take on death triangle we say the, the bastards uh Pac is the only people he's loyal to is Ray Phoenix and uh, Penta. Those are the only two. Those are the only two he's loyal to. He's like, he's best friends with him. He's like, they ride with him everywhere. He'll face whatever. Hell, he, he, yeah. Bastard Pac convinced uh, Ray Phoenix, the purest one, to just hit it, like, get the hammer and knocked out one of the uh, Young Bucks. I think it was Kenny or one of the Young Bucks to get the victory or whatever to, uh, to retain their trios championships at... Um, Full gear, I believe. So they all, these three are ride to die. So I wouldn't be surprised if you might see that as well. So it could be something real fun um, as well. So, uh, but as for the Golden Elite, who knows? Um, I think there was a after promo saying that Kenny Omega is not going to lead. Like he's going whatever he points to the uh, Elite or whatever where they guys are. Hopefully that means they're staying. I don't know. Hopefully they are. And I don't know what else they're going to do with them. I think the storyline's over. Blackpool Combat Club looks like they're going to be doing stuff because they get they could be villains, heels, whatever. But it looks like the Don, but you know, hey, the Don Callis family could be building something up too because Kesta, Jericho, or maybe hmm, who knows? Could be the Kesta and Jericho versus the Golden Lovers. That'd be interesting. But hey, want to hear? I want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, uh, you know, whatever, and all that good stuff, but anyway, at the end of the day, I'm just hoping that, uh, Hangman Page, uh, you know, or, you know, um, Eddie Kingston, the guy that the black, yeah, he would have been, like, loyal to, um, <laughs> he wouldn't have done anything to him, like, yeah, he would have been like, yeah, uh, I'm not going to, uh, betray you like these two other people are, so yeah, it could be very interesting, could be, you know, Maybe Takesta Pac and the Death Triangle versus um, uh, a lovely four of you know Blackpool Combat Club and uh, Eddie Kingston. That'd be fun. Who knows? Hmm, that'd be nice. Hey, by the way, Eddie. Oh yeah, Eddie Kingston says Penta is best friend too. So, man, Eddie Kingston has the worst luck of friends if it's, if he goes to this feud. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, that's it for me, Duke CT. Thank you so much for listening. Peace and love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Later.